The most exquisite performance on Broadway this season, bar none, is Glenda Jackson and Three Tall Women. Glenda, what is the most humbling experience in your career? Humbling experience in my career. It was, I was doing a play in, with the Royal Shakespeare Company and um, this young girl came back to the dressing room afterwards and it was about the Vietnam War and it was a play that moved people very much. It was in the middle of the Vietnam War so you can imagine what it was like and she was absolutely, I mean she was in tears, she couldn't speak hardly and there was nothing I could do but order her a taxi to make sure that she got home and that was pretty humbling. This performance is so exquisite. It takes a journey to go from part A to part B to an awards season. What has your journey been like with this play? Well, really, as I said actually tonight when they so kindly gave me this award, one of the great pluses, quite apart from it being a marvelous play, is that I'm working with two quite extraordinary, wonderful actresses. And the opportunity to work with actresses as an actress are very few and far between, because there's usually only one woman's part, and if you've got it, that's it. So to be with those two, night after night, eight performances a week, is just wonderful. Thank you. Your play is actually my favorite revival. Well, thank you, sir. If you want an exquisite book to a musical, look no further than Tina Fey's Mean Girls. Tina, you have had such an extensive and exquisite career. What has been the most humbling moment in your whole career? Oh my gosh, a humbling moment in my whole career? Mm -hmm. Oh, humbling. Well, or the moment that meant the most? The moment that meant the most? I mean, I've been lucky to have a lot of special special nights. I think uh, the most recent one that comes to mind is, is how much we learned from the audiences at the National Theater in Washington, D.C. We took our show out of town. We had a great lab experience. We're like, we got this. And the audiences were great and smart down there and generous, but they also really organically let us know what needed fixed. And that's, you know, go, being sent back to the drawing board in a lot of ways is, is always humbling, but always necessary. Do you have a favorite Mean Girls line? I have a lot of them, and mostly because of the way our actors deliver them. I, I am very partial to Gretchen Wiener's uh, line, as performed by Ashley Park, about uh, feeling like an iPhone without a case. Um, I have, there's so many tiny things that wouldn't even stand out, except for I love the way the actors say them. Well, congratulations. I am so excited because, as I've stated, she was my vote for Best Director and will always be my vote for Best Director in a musical. And, you know, I, I just kept telling you you were wrong, and now I have to say you were right. And I am um, shocked and really, really, really happy. What has been the most humbling experience for you? This. Um, <laughs> this. You know, I, I just, when you make something like we did out of joy and desire and play, that feels like such a privilege to begin with. Then you get to share it with audiences. That is such a blessing. And then to be recognized like this, it doesn't, it feels like one doesn't need or want or go for this. So it's, it's very humbling because it's all extra. It's all things that are not necessary, but are also wonderful. And what encouragement would you say to young directors, especially women, who want to be in this field? I would say absolutely follow your bliss. Like for me, the main thing is stick to the vision. Stick, stick. And especially when you're young, and especially if you're female, you'll want to listen to a lot of voices telling you a lot of things and just listen to that voice. Well, I look forward to seeing you at the Tonys in the Tony room, so <laughs> I'll see you then. All right, thank you. Bye, Jenny. So this year, the Bim Platt of performances is Ethan Slater in SpongeBob SquarePants. We said he'd win the Drama Desk, and he did. I want to know what has been the most humbling experience for you in your entire little baby career so far. <laughs> oh, the, the whole thing has been unbelievably humbling. I mean, I, I, I get, because I'm having a little bit of trouble really processing everything, I'll give you the thought that I had right before they called my name, which was I was hearing the names of the people who are in my category, 
and e uh, each person's name was called, and I was like, wow, they're giving a fantastic performance this season. They, they're probably going to win. They're, oh no, well, you know, you know, Joshua Henry is definitely good. like he's amazing. I'm, I've been a fan of his forever, and so just to be a part of this group of nominated actors and and this season. I, it's an honor that I can't even really process. I am a fan of all of the people in these, this season and uh, it feels really special to be a part of it. Now I know you're going to be in Spongebob for a while, but if there was a role that you could take on next, what would that role be? Oh, that is such a tough question. I'm going to give a cop-out answer, which is I really love doing new things. And if there's a playwright who wants to write a play, uh, and I can be in that new play and create a new character, I would love that. The other answer that I would give um, is the weirdest thing, but I've always wanted to play Shylock in Merchant of Venice. I saw a production with Mark Nelson in Washington, D.C., and the uh, sensitivity with which they approached a play that is really problematic, but a big part of the canon, was beautiful, and, they, and I really felt like they uh, reshaped that show for a modern audience, and I have always wanted a chance to do that. Um, it's also a show that, that my father really doesn't want me to be in. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're Jewish and... It's the rebellion. Yeah, it's the re that's my little rebellion. I want to play Shylock. And what advice would you give to young actors right now who want to be in your shoes? I would say two things. One is keep on following the things that you're passionate about. Um, it's a difficult business, but everything's a difficult business. And if you follow your passions, you will feel fulfilled by them um, in one way or another. I'd say the other thing is to keep creating your own stuff. Um, it's really difficult to try to have somebody cast you in something or pick you to do something. But if you're creating your own things, you're giving yourself an opportunity to grow as an artist. You're giving the world an opportunity to see who you are as an artist. And um, you're getting a chance to work with your friends and create a community. Uh, and I think that will also be fulfilling, but it will keep you going. And if you have to work a day job, which everyone does, and I did right up until we started this show, um, you'll have that to be working on while you're a barista in a coffee shop, for example.